So nine two is ellipses. This is the third of the four conics that we're gonna do. Ellipses are basically just an oval. So you're gonna do the same kinds of things with ellipses that we did with uh, the circles and the parabolas is that you're gonna get information, you're gonna get an equation and you're gonna have to pull information out of it about the ellipse, graph it, or vice versa. You're gonna get information about the ellipse and then you're going to get the equation. So an ellipse is the set of all points x, y in a plane who, in which the sum of the distances from the two distinct fixed points is, which is the foci, is constant. That's just the definition of it, okay? The difference is it's not just the same fixed distance all the way around like the circle is this time. It's the sum of those two, okay? But on an ellipse, you get a center, just like you do in a, uh, in a circle. But then you have, these are called vertices, and there are two of them. They are on what's called the major axis or the longer one. And then you have something called covertices. And those are on the shorter axis or the minor one. And then you have foci, which is just the plural of a focus. Okay, plural, it would be foci. And those also lie on the major axis or the longest axis. So you're going to identify all of those parts on an ellipse. The center, the vertices, the covertices, and the foci. So it adds in some more stuff, okay, which will be the same for almost the same for a hyperbola. Now, this one is wider than it is tall. The major axis is the x-axis, but it could flip and it would be taller than it is wide. Those would be a whole, that would be a vertical ellipse. So the major and minor axis... Okay, the line through the foci that intersects the ellipse at two points are called vertices. So again, these are your, that's a vertex, that's a vertex. The cord joining the vertices is the major axis. So whatever the longer axis is, is your major axis. The cord joining the shorter ones is the minor axis. So that's what this is. The midpoint of each of these is your center. So the point in the middle or where they cross would be your center. Those two chords are always going to be perpendicular. So they're going to meet at a right angle. Minor axis, shorter one, major axis, longer one. They can either be horizontal like we just saw. So the left is the horizontal or the right, which is vertical. So if it's wider than it is tall, it is a horizontal Ellipse, if it is taller than it is wide, it's a vertical ellipse. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a couple of things going on in these slides. And then they are the same letters for both of these, but you're either doing them on the vertical axis or the, uh, or the horizontal axis. The distance from the center to the vertex is A. So this is A. Distance from center to vertex is A and it will go in both directions. The distance from the center to the co-vertex is B. So A is gonna be the larger number. And then the distance from the center, get a different color here, to the foci is C. So A is distance from, if you want to write it out, you can. A, distance from center to vertex in each direction. B, distance from center to co-vertices. So co-vertex in each direction. And... C, distance from center to focus. And again, there's two of those, one in either direction. A and C are both on the major axis. B is on the minor axis. Major, longer, <coughs> minor, shorter. If the major is horizontal, then obviously our, our ellipse is wider than it is tall. If the major is vertical, then it's taller than it is wide. 
And those are all coordinate points. So it, if it asks you for the the vertex, well, the center, the vertex, the foci, or the covertices, you will all you will put them all in coordinate point form. The equations of ellipses, and we're going to do the same thing as we did with parabolas. Start with ones in which the center's at zero zero. So for horizontal, it's x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. And for vertical, it's y squared over a squared plus x squared over b squared equals one. Now the order there does not matter. So I could also say vertical is x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals one. The important thing is that a is the larger denominator. So that is how you know if it's horizontal or vertical. If the bigger denominator is under the X, it's horizontal. If the bigger denominator is under the Y, it's vertical. So if you remember this from Algebra 2, that is different when we get into hyperbolas. Hyperbolas, the order matters because there's a minus between them and the A is always first. But with an ellipse, the A is always larger. So the length of the major axis is 2A. The length of the minor axis is 2B because you're going B in each direction or A in each direction. And you are going to get given two of those three things. So you'll either get given the vertices or you'll get given the covertices or you'll get given the foci. You'll get two of those three. And you'll use C squared equals A squared minus B squared to find the third. So sometimes you'll get A and C. Sometimes you'll get B and C. Sometimes you'll get A and B. And then you'll have to find C using that same formula. So it's similar to Pythagorean theorem, but it is a minus, not a plus. So be careful. All right, and then all the stuff underneath here is what we already said. To get the vertices, we would go right and left the A. If it's horizontal, we would go up and down the A if it's vertical. To get the foci, we go right and left the C or up and down the C. And to get the covertices, we'd go up and down the B or right and left the B, depending on if it's horizontal or vertical. Okay, how does it change if my center is no longer at zero, zero? To me, the bottom half of this chart confuses the heck out of people. So I don't even recommend trying to memorize it. Know the equations. So we've added in the H's and the K's. Everything else stays the same. Again, H is always with the X. K is always with the Y. But then underneath it, if you understand that you're moving right and left and up and down from your center, you should be able to get to these without having to use like a formula because you will literally take your center and you will add and subtract based on the X or the Y, depending on if it's vertical or horizontal. So to me, people confuse themselves with the bottom part of this chart. If it confuses you, don't use it. Understand how to draw them out and it will make your life easier. All right, so this one says, find the standard form of the equation of an ellipse having a foci at zero, one and four, one and a major axis length of six. So first thing I do is draw it out. First piece of information is ellipse, obviously. And then the second is that it's a foci at 0, 1, and 4, 1. So I label them with little Fs because they're foci. What do you already know about this ellipse? Not at 0, 0. It's not at 0, 0. Good. So HK is not 0, 0. What else? It's horizontal because the foci is on the major axis, right? So if it is horizontal, what variable gets the A? X. X. So it's going to be X minus H squared over A squared. Already you know that because it's horizontal. As soon as you know it's horizontal, you know the X gets the A. Okay, and then I mean we'll figure out the rest, obviously. But that's what I already know. What else do you already know based on the foci? Or what can you find? Uh, um, Where's the center? It's halfway between them too, right? So you can either find the midpoint or you could literally find the middle. Like find the midpoint by adding the two X's dividing by two and adding the two Y's divided by two. Or if you draw it accurately, you could literally find the middle. 
which is at 2, 1. So now I have x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared. I already have both numerators, and it has to equal 1, so I have that too. What else do we use the foci for? What's the distance from the center to the foci? A, B, or C? C. So I know C is 1, 2, which is not part of my equation, but I'm going to need it to get the B. That, I knew all of that just from foci. Now I go to second part of information, which is major axis length of 6. What does that mean? Yeah, so you'd go up three, or you'd go right three, left three, right? This is your 2A. So A equals three. Now I have A, I have C, which is two. So I can, if I wanted to graph it, I can draw in one, two, three, that's the A. So this is my vertex. One, two, three, that's my other vertex. If it asks for coordinate points, I would literally take the x value of my center and add and subtract that 3 from it, okay? But for my equation, I only need one more piece of information, which is b. And we said c squared equals a squared minus b squared for an ellipse. So 2 squared equals 3 squared minus b squared. 4 equals 9 minus b squared. Negative 5 equals negative b squared. So b squared is 5. If I wanted to graph it and get the vertices, I would then square root 5, and that would be my b. I'd go up and down that, which I'd approximate to be just bigger than 2. But for the equation, it's a squared and b squared, so I don't even need to square root it. The a squared, we said our a is 3, so the a squared is 9. And the b squared we just found to be 5. So there's a lot of stuff going on with ellipses. You've got to make sure you practice it. You want to be able to understand it so much that they could give you any kind of combination of information and you would be able to find what you need. Questions on that one? All right, this one is now the reverse. I have an equation, it's not in standard formula, but I at least have an equation and then it wants you to get all the information out of it. So the first thing you have to know about an ellipse is that it's equal to one. So when it's not equal to one like this one, how do I make it equal to one? Divide it by 36. Divide everything by 36. So each of these are gonna get a divided by 36. And I get 4 goes into 36, 9 times. So x squared over 9 plus y squared over 36 equals 1. So then from there you get a and b then, right? Yep. Where well, tell me all the things you know about this. A is 3, b is 6. A is 3. Nope. Is a is always larger. So a squared is 36, which means a is 6. And because that's under the Y, what kind of ellipse is this? Vertical. vertical. Tell me what else you know. The center, the center is what? Zero, zero. Yep. We said already B squared is 9, right? So B is 3. And you can find C then, right? Yep. First, I would even like look and see if you need C. Usually it's going to ask you for the center, the vertices, the foci, so you would need it. If you're just graphing, you actually don't need C, right? So we're going to find it because you're going to need to find it eventually anyways, but the directions actually didn't even say anything about foci. So make sure you read them because you could have saved yourself extra work. But C squared equals A squared, which is 36, minus B squared, which is 9. C squared equals 27. C would equal the square root of 27 which is 3 and 9, or 3 and 3, and this is 3 root 3. 
Now I would go to my graph. Start to give yourself the visual of what this ellipse looks like. Our center's at zero, zero. We said it's vertical, so we are going up and down the larger value, which is our A. So I go up to six and down to six, and those are our vertices. Zero, negative six, and zero, six. I go right and left the B, which is three. And those are our co-vertices. Negative three, zero, three, zero. And then I literally can just draw my ellipse based on that information. Now, if it had asked you to plot your foci, you would have to go up and down C, which is three root three. So if I want an exact value of my foci, I'm gonna add that to the Y because you're going up and down. So it's zero, positive three root three, and zero, negative three root three. And if I wanted to graph it on my actual graph, on my coordinate grid, I would approximate from the square root of 27. So square root of 27 is a little bit bigger than five. I would go up just past the five and down just past the negative five, and those would be your foci. So once you get your equation in standard form, I would say the easiest thing to do is grab your center, then figure out which one has the bigger denominator, and that determines if it's vertical or horizontal. The bigger denominator is your a squared. The smaller denominator is your b squared. And then you should be able to graph it from there. Questions on that one? All right. Example three. Graph the ellipse. Identify the center, vertices, and foci. So again, you're given an equation, but what? Is it in standard form? No, can I just divide by a number this time? No, you get to do what? Complete the square. This time we're going to complete it twice because there's an x, and, an x squared and a y squared. So I'm going to group together the x squared and the 6x. I'm going to group together the y squared and the negative 8y. I'm going to bump the 9 to the other side. For the x, you don't have to take anything out. Take the 6, divide it by 2, square it, you get 9. You're going to add 9 to the left and add 9 to the right. For the y, you have to take out the 4. It comes off the y squared and the negative 8y. Now I take 2, divide it by 2, that's 1, square it, that's 1. I add 1 here. I would normally add one to the other side, but I have to multiply by the four first. So whatever you take out on the front, you have to multiply by before you add that to the other side to balance your equation. So on the x's, I would square root the x squared. I would square root the nine, take the sign from the middle, put it in parentheses and square it. That one's factored. On the y's, you have a 4 on the front, square root the y squared, square root the 1, take the sign from the middle, which is minus, put it in parentheses and square it. And all the way to the right, negative 9 plus 9 is going to cancel, positive 4 is what's on that side. Yep. Because you have to take out the 4, which makes this 2. Nope, you can't. Otherwise, it's not a perfect square anymore. You can't factor it. The whole point is to make it a perfect square so you could factor it using that trick. You can't factor it using that trick if it's not a perfect square. So you have to get rid of the one on the front first. But am I in standard form yet? Good. Has to be equal to one. Was that your question, Alex? Oh. Yeah. Because you're doing it to different sides. So when we did this the very first time, we kept everything on one side. So to balance out that same side, you'd have to add and subtract. 
to balance this equation, whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you got to do the other side of the equal sign. So you do the same. So it's always going to be adding. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So now we've got it in standard form. Tell me what you know about this ellipse. A squared is one. B squared is one. I'm going to say A squared is four. B squared is one. What else does that tell you? Because the A is under the X. Horizontal. Isabel. What would it do if the squared didn't cancel out? It would, I mean, it may result in something that, you mean in the top? You would have to bring it to the bottom, and it would have to be like a fraction in the denominator. Okay. Yeah. Um, which happened in Algebra 2 honors all the time. It was super fun, but it doesn't happen that much now. All right. Where's the center? Negative 3, 1. Good. Okay. Then I immediately go to my graph. Start with what we know. Negative 3, 1, that's my center. It's horizontal, which means I'm going to go right and left the A. So we said A squared is 4. Um, A squared was 4, which means A is 2. B squared was 1, which means B is 1. So horizontal means I'm going to the right 2, to the left 2. Those are my vertices. Which is negative 5, 1, and negative 1, 1. So again, you can either like physically graph it and count to that coordinate point, or this is left and right. So I can take my center and add and subtract the two to the X because you're changing the X, which is left and right. So negative three minus two is negative five, negative three plus two is negative one. So you could do it either way. Figure out if you're either visual or you like that little equation, it doesn't matter. Then the B is 1, so I go up 1 and down 1, and those are my co-vertices, which would be negative 3, 2, and negative 3, 0. This time you can, again, either use your graph to find those coordinate points, or from the center you're changing your Y. You're going up 1 from B, or up the B, which is 1, and then down the B, which is 1. So I take my center, I change the Y, I add the 1, I get the 2, I subtract the 1, I get the 0. So again, if you use the graph or you use those um, equations, it doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you eventually get to those coordinate points. Last thing it asks for that we haven't gotten is the foci. We have the a squared, we have the b squared, so c squared equals a squared, which is 4, minus b squared, which is 1, c squared is 3, and c is the square root of 3. Do I go up or down with that or left and right? Left and right because it's horizontal. So I, if I was to graph this, square root 3 is just a little bit smaller than square root 4, which is 2. So I'm literally going just a little bit smaller than 2 to the left and just a little bit smaller than 2 on the right. And what I am doing is taking the x coordinate of my center and adding and subtracting square root 3. So my foci is negative 3 minus square root 3, 1, and negative 3 plus square root 3, 1. And you can keep it as plus and minus. Like, I don't care how you keep that. Sure. Questions on that one? Whatever your C is, you're going to take that. And if it's vertical, you're adding and subtracting it to the Y coordinate of your center. If it's horizontal like this one, we're adding and subtracting it to the X coordinate of our center. All right, you do this one. All right, so we're going to complete this square again, right? This time we're grouping the X's and the Y's together. So 4X squared minus 8X and then plus y squared plus 4y, and then we're bumping the 8 to the other side. This time there's something attached to the x, so I got to take that out, 4x squared minus 2x, and then the y stays the same, equals 8. Take the 2, divide it by 2, that's 1 squared, it's 1. We're going to add 1 here. We would normally add 1 over here, but we have to multiply by the 4 first. So now we're adding 4. Repeat that process for y. Take the 4, divide it by 2. It's 2 squared. It's 4. I'm adding 4. There's nothing on the front to multiply by. So I'm just adding 4 for that one. 
Then I get four, square root the first term, square root the last term, take the sign from the middle, put it in the parentheses and square it. Take the y, square root the y, square root the four, take the sign from the middle, put it in parentheses and square it. And you get eight plus four plus four or 16. Standard form has to be equal to one. So we divide everything by 16. Four goes into 16 four times. X minus one squared equals four plus y plus two squared over 16 equals one. So there's the standard form of your ellipse. Everybody good so far? Nelka, you getting all this? Abe, you getting all this? What's the center of this? Good. Is it vertical or horizontal? Vertical. It's vertical because the bigger one is under the Y. So the bigger one, which is your A squared, is 16, which makes A 4. The B squared is 4, which makes B 2. So from my center, which is 1, negative 2, I'm going up and down the A because it's vertical. So 1, 2, 3, 4, that's one of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, that's the other vertice. So my vertices are 1, 2, and 1, negative 6. We added and subtracted the a to the y coordinate, or use your graph. The b is right and left 2. So that's my co-vertices. Negative 1, negative 2, and 3, negative 2. I went right and left the b that time. So I can connect it already and draw your ellipse, okay? But it also asks for the foci, so I'm going to do c squared equals a squared minus b squared. c squared would equal 16 minus 4. c squared is 12. c would equal the square root of 12. So if I was to graph it, I would base it off of that. I would approximate root 12 to be in between root 9 and root 16. So in between 3 and 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, which means it's here and here. But when I want to give it as foci coordinate points, they have to be exact. So I am taking that, which becomes 2 root 3, because it would be 2 and 6 and 2 and 3. I'm taking the 2 root 3, and I am adding it and subtracting it to the y coordinate of my center. So I'd get 1 and negative 2 plus and minus 2 root 3. Which, again, if it's just like a short answer, you could totally write that out on one line. If it's open-ended and it has like the different spots in WebAssign, you have to write them both out separate. Last thing, and it's easy, okay, is the eccentricity. The eccentricity of an ellipse indicates how oval the ellipse is, like how rounded it is or how flat it is. The variable you use to represent eccentricity is an E, a little lowercase e. That is not our natural base E. It has nothing to do with it, okay? And you find it by doing C over A. So E equals C over A. They will always in be in between 0 and 1 for an ellipse because C is A squared minus B squared. So C has to be bigger than A, okay? Or smaller than A, sorry. Um, and the closer it is to 0, the more rounded it is. So an eccentricity of 0 is a circle. The closer it is to 0, it's more rounded. The further it's from 0, it looks more like, like a pancake, like it flattens out, okay? This is just a question on almost every single of the web assigned questions. It literally will say, find the center, find the focus, find the da, da, and then find the eccentricity, okay? To be honest, it's not that big of a deal. It can, it can like help you out with your overall shape, but the rest of the stuff is much more important. So this is just like those two options. The first one is like if it had an E of zero, it would actually be a circle, which an ellipse is a circle, right? A circle is an ellipse. It just has an E and C and A of one, I mean of zero. And then the eccentricity of it being closer to one just means it flattens out a little bit. So if you're gonna find it, if I went back to the last thing and I wanted to find what E was, my A was, what was it, four? The last one, my A was four, my C was two root three. I would do C over A, so two root three over four, and the eccentricity there would be root three over two. Again, it's, for an ellipse, it's always got to be, be between 0 and 1. It can't be smaller than 0, and it can't be bigger than 1. Questions on ellipses?